Okay, so arithmetical sequences are sequences where, in fact, to get the next term, what you do is just add a constant number every single time, and that keeps building up the sequence. Let's take a look at another type of sequence that has the same sort of spirit, but different arithmetic. Here's an example. Suppose I start with a 3, and then I see a 12, and then I see a 48, and then I see 192. Now you can see immediately this sequence grows a lot faster than any kind of arithmetical sequence, and so it can't be, because here to get to here I'd, I'd have to add 9, but here to get to here I've got to add a whole bunch of stuff. I've got to add like, what, 36 to get to there and so on. So that the amount I'm adding seems to be increasing. So it's not going to be an arithmetical sequence. Is there any pattern to this? Well, you may notice that, in fact, to get from here to here, I multiplied 3 by 4. Now, how do I get from here to here? Well, notice if I take this and multiply it by 4, I actually get the next term. And if I take this and multiply it by 4, I get the next term. So, in fact, this does have some sort of pattern. It has a multiplicative type structure where to get the next term, instead of adding a constant number, I multiply by a constant number. These are called geometric sequences. And in fact, these are sequences that sort of really, in some sense, explain growth. In fact, we've seen a lot of these things in some sense. When we think about interest rates and compounding and things of that sort, the essence of it really is a geometrical type sequence where things grow very quickly by a multiplicative factor. So how can I describe a geometric sequence sort of in general? Well, what property must it have? Well, it must have, in order for me to get the next term, I take the previous term and multiply by a constant number, a constant ratio. That means that if I take any two consecutive terms and divide this one into that one, the answer should always be the same. It should be that ratio. And so what we say is a geometric uh, sequence is one where we have a constant ratio. If you take the nth plus first term and divide it by the nth term, that's always the same. Look at it. If I take 12 and divide it by the previous term, 3, I get 4. If I take 48, and divided by the previous term, I get 4. If I take 192 and divide it by the previous term, I get 4. So it's always the constant ratio. It's always the same. So this, in fact, explains and defines a geometric sequence. OK. Well, now the question is, how can you now give a formula for a geometric sequence if you want to find the nth term? Well, let's look at this example and see. So this is going to be 3. And let's write this out. This is going to be 3 times 4. And then to get this term, what do I do? I take the previous term and multiply it by 4. So that would actually be 3 times 4 squared, wouldn't it? Because 4 times 4. And this would be 3 times 4 squared times 4, which is 4 cubed. And then I see 3 times 4 to the fifth. And so on. So let's see. If this is the first term, and this is the second term, and this is the third term, and this is the fourth term, and this is the fifth term, what's the pattern? Well, the pattern is, let's see, if I want to get the nth term, what do I do? Well, I always seem to have the first term as a multiplicative factor everywhere. See how the a1 is in every single thing, the 3 is in every single thing. So I'd have an a1, and then I'm going to have the r, that ratio, that common ratio, to some power. Now, what power should it be? Well. In the second, when n equals 2, the power should be 1. When n equals 3, the power should be 2. When n equals 4, the power should be 3. When n equals 5, the power should be 4. Oops, I made a typo here. This should be 4. So what's the pattern? Well, the pattern is if I'm at n, the power should be 1 less than n. In each case, 4, and I'm at 3. 3, I want exponent of 2, and so on. So it should be n minus 1. So there's actually a formula that will generate the nth term in a geometric sequence starting with a1 and having that common ratio r. So you can actually find any sequence you want. For example, for example, suppose that I tell you that I'm thinking of a geometric sequence. Its first term equals 4, and its second term equals 20. Can you tell me what the fourth term is going to be? Well, to find the fourth term, I've got to find that ratio. Because I already know a1, but I need to find that ratio. How could I do that? Well, if I plug this in to this formula, what would that give me? Well, that would tell me the following. It would tell me that a2, a2, which I'm told is 20. So 20 would have to equal a1, which I know is 4, 
times this mysterious ratio, which I have no idea what that is, but raised to what power? Well, now I raise it to the n, which is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1. So I can now actually solve this for r. If 20 equals 4r, then I know that r must equal 5. And so then the formula in this case for this particular example would look like this. a n equals 4, because that's the a1, times r, which is 5, raised to the power n minus 1. So there's the formula. So if you want to know A4, that's really easy. I know the answer. The answer would now be 4 times 5 raised to what power? Well, the 4 minus 1, which is the third power. So that would equal 4 times 125, which equals what? Well, that equals 500. So the fourth term in this geometric series is already 500. We start with a 4, go to a 20, and we're already up to 500 in the fourth term. Really fast-growing sequence, a really fast-growing sequence. Let's try one more example just to illustrate this sort of way of thinking. Suppose I tell you I have a geometric sequence. The third term is 5, and the eighth term is 1 over 625. And my question is, give a general formula that generates all the terms. So what's a formula for this geometric sequence? Well, the first thing you notice is that if A5, if A3 is 5 and, A, and A8 is this small number, in fact, that ratio probably is going to be a fraction that's going to be less than 1. Because I have to multiply 5 by something that's less than 1 to make it smaller and smaller and smaller to get it down to here. So in fact, this is going to be a sequence that's going to be decreasing rather than increasing. But in any case, we know the formula. The formula is, the nth term of the sequence is just a1 times r to the n minus 1. So let's plug in this information. When n equals 3, I know that a3 equals 5. So I have 5 equals a1, don't know what that is, r to what power? Well, if n is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. So there's an equation that's in a1 and r, and I don't know either of them. That's a problem. But I know one more fact. I know that when n equals 8, this number is 1 over 165. I mean, it's 100, uh, I'm sorry, what am I saying? 625. And what does that equal? Well, it equals a1 times r to what power? Well, if n equals 8, then this would be n minus 1, which is 7. Well, look what I have. I have two equations in two unknowns. I can solve this again. Now, it's not linear. It's not linear because I have exponents. So you can't use any sort of matrix stuff now. But what I'll do is I'll use the substitution method. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take this and solve it for a1 and substitute that value in here. If I solve this for a1, what I see is a1 equals 5 divided by r squared. And if I now take that and plug that in for the a1 here, because that equals a1, then what do I see? I see 1 over 625 equals, now instead of a1, I'm putting in 5 divided by r squared. So I see 5 divided by r squared, and then I multiply it by r to the 7th. So I can actually cancel. Um, I have two r's down here. I've got seven r's up here. So if I cancel, I'll be left with r to the 5th. And so now if I divide both sides by this 5, I see that um, r to the 5th, equals what? Well, if I divide both sides by the 5, I see 1 over 625 times another 5 down there, which is 1 over 3,125. Well, you can take fifth roots of both sides and see that, in fact, r has to be 1 fifth. That is, if you take 1 fifth and multiply it by itself 5 times, you actually get 1 over 3,125. You can check that. So there's r. There's that constant ratio. What's a1? Well, I could find a1 by just plugging back into here. So a1 would equal 5 divided by uh, r squared. So that would be 1 fifth squared. Well, 1 fifth squared is actually 20, is 1 over 25. But that's a complex fraction, so I invert and multiply. Whoop, so I get the 25 on top. So I see 5 times 25, which is 125. So that's the first term, and every successive term, I take the next term and I multiply it by a fifth 
take that answer, multiply it by fifth, and so on. So the general formula I can now report is a n equals 125 times 1 fifth to the n minus 1. And that will generate now every single term in this geometric sequence. If you want to know the 27th term, you just plug in n equals 27, and I see 125 times 1 fifth ta raised to the power 26, 27 minus 1. So again, just like with arithmetical sequences, geometric sequences, you can always find out exactly the whole sequence just knowing two pieces of information, either the first term and that common ratio, or just two terms in the sequence, and you can then solve by getting two equations and two unknowns for R and the first term. Geometric sequences. Gotta love them. See you soon.